Today I want to talk about the parable of the sower, which can be found in Matthew chapter 13, Mark chapter 4, and Luke chapter 8. And so here we have the parable of the sower, and I'm emphasizing that it's the parable of the sower who went out to sow seed. Because so often this is characterized as the parable of the types of soil whereupon it is made your obligation to determine what type of soil you are to the point that I've even had people say things like I've heard people say things like I just want to be good ground I just want to be the good soil to which I respond by saying walk out to the road stand on top of the road and say you filthy reprobate pavement you should be good soil and that's every bit as ludicrous as a person saying I just want to be the good soil this is why I'm emphasizing that it's the parable of the sower because another word we could use for sower is farmer and only an idiot farmer would go and throw seed on I-95 and think that they're going to have a bountiful harvest in a few months. And if you did actually have a paved surface or stony ground, it would be incumbent upon you as the farmer to plow that up and make it into the kind of ground that you can plant seeds on. More on that later. Let's get into the text. So, I want to use here the version from Mark. So here we are in the book of Mark, chapter 4. And starting at verse 1, it says, And he began again to teach by the seaside. And there was gathered unto him a great multitude, so that he entered into a ship and sat in the sea. And the whole multitude was by the sea on the land. And he taught them many things by parables. And he said unto them in his doctrine, Hearken, behold, there went out a sower to sow. And it came to pass, as he sowed, some fell by the wayside, and the fowls of the air came and devoured it up. And some fell on stony ground, where it had not much earth, and immediately it sprang up, because it had no depth of earth. But when the sun was up, it was scorched, and because it had no root, it withered away. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it, and it yielded no fruit. And other fell on good ground, and it did yield fruit that sprang up and increased, and brought forth some thirty, and some sixty, and some an hundred. And he said to them, He that has ears to hear, let him hear. And when he was alone, they that were about him of the twelve asked of him the parable. And he said unto them, Unto you it is given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God. But unto them that are without, all these things are done in parables, that seeing they may see and not perceive, and hearing they may hear and not understand, lest at any time they should be converted and their sins should be forgiven them. And he said unto them, Know you not this parable? Then how will you know all parables? The sower sows the word, and these that are by the wayside are the word where the word is sown, but when they have heard, Satan comes immediately and takes away the word that was sown in their hearts. And these are they likewise which are sown on stony ground, who when they have heard the word, immediately receive it with gladness, and have no root in themselves, and so endure but for a time afterward. When affliction or persecution arises for the world's sake, immediately they are offended. And these are they which are sown among thorns, such as hear the word, and the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches and the lusts of other things entering in choke the word, and it becomes unfruitful. And these are they which are sown on good ground, such as hear the word, and receive it, and bring forth fruit, some thirtyfold, some sixty, and some an hundred. And so this is where we get the idea of people saying, I just want to be the good ground. They want to be the fruitful ground. But this is the parable of the sower. And since it is said that the word is the word of God, and not in this version, I think it might be in the Matthew version, um, but it says that the word is the word of God, it is therefore often interpreted 
that the sower is Jesus. So since the sower of Je is Jesus, which is being interpreted and read into it where it doesn't say that, it's being interpreted that the sower can't be an idiot. And I suggest to you that this is a story about a sower who's a complete and total idiot. This is the world's stupidest farmer. He's going around and he's throwing seed on linoleum and on I-95 and on the sidewalk and on the carpet. And he's pretty much throwing it everywhere and it's just landing wherever it lands. And he's just like, ah, oh, I don't care. I mean, I get paid by the hour. You know, what difference does it make to me? I mean, this is what I see. Why are you throwing it these places? <laughs> throw some in the trash can. Throw some on the linoleum. Throw some on the uh, the laminate flooring. Throw some inside Home Depot. Like, what? It makes no sense. What farmer is just casting seed where the seed has value in and of itself? Like, you spent money to buy it or took efforts to get the seed from where it was. And then you're just going to throw it willy-nilly wherever, you know, who cares? Hey, look, some landed in this crack on I-95 and it started to sprout up. Too bad rush hour traffic mowed it down and it died. It doesn't make any sense. We, this is the parable of the world's most idiotic, incompetent farmer who, by some stroke of sheer dumb luck, happened to throw some seed on the soil that yielded fruit. Good job. You managed to actually yield fruit. And this is exactly the point of the, of the parable. The point of the parable is that if you're giving people the word of God, you need to not be this stupid, incompetent, ridiculous sower who just scattershot throws, throws it around and expects it to yield results. Just like a farmer who, upon stony ground, would need to take a plow to it and plow it up before sowing the seed, that's what you need to do. And if the ground is fallow and overgrown with thorns and thistles, first you need to burn it, and then you need to plow it. And if it's dry, hard ground, you need to plow it, you need to water it. That's the whole point. If you're going to be a sower, you need to actually be an appropriate kind of farmer who takes care of the land, who plows the soil, who waters the crop. You don't just cast the seed and think, hey, my job's done. I don't care. I get paid by the hour. It doesn't matter that it landed on I-95 where nothing will grow. So let's go through a couple parts of this again. Behold, there went out the world's most idiotic, incompetent farmer to sow. And he just threw it wherever, on the wayside, on the stony ground, among the thorns. And hey, some happened to fall on good ground, and good job, it yielded fruit. He that has ears to hear, let him hear. Hey, uh, what's your parable mean? Uh, I don't know, maybe it's got something to do with... Uh, if you're sowing the word and then you throw it on the wayside and God's supernatural spirit rival immortal that competes with them because I guess he got bored of being all powerful and all knowing and nothing ever being a surprise to him. So he made a rival that is more successful than him. Well, he comes and he eats up all the seed that got thrown on the linoleum and I-95. So that's the first part. And then in the second part, is where it was thrown on the stony ground and they that heard the word received it with gladness, but they didn't have any root in themselves. So, you know, once the challenges of life came, they were like, you know, fuck this message. This is obviously bullshit because there is nothing good in the world and anything and everything only ever gets worse. So this message of good news is complete crap. And then here's the one sown among the thorns. And so they get taken into trying to just keep their head afloat and get through life and survival mode so they're not that fruitful. And then here's these ones that actually were taken care of properly and guided into believing the message and sticking with it and understanding that yes, things really can be good and you can actually have kindness and trust people and so those are those that hear the word and receive it and bring forth fruit. 
Why? Because it was the job of the sower to determine the outcome. It was the job of the sower to determine the outcome. It is not the job of the soil to determine the outcome. So what he's saying is don't be the world's most incompetent farmer. Be a good farmer. Take care of the soil. When you're sowing seed, notice such things. Do you have to break up a stony heart? Do you need to water the soil? Do you need to continue to maintain it and, and make sure what's going on with that person? Maybe you need to follow up. Maybe you need to continue to ask questions. Maybe you need to continue to demonstrate compassion and kindness towards somebody. This is what the parable of the sower is really about. Is about being, if you are a sower, if you are sowing the word, that you have to follow up. You have to take those measures. You have to be a good sower and not an idiot that just casts it willy-nilly everywhere in the expectation that, hey, at least some will yield fruit. That's ridiculous. That's a waste of everybody's time. All you really need to do is just work what you work and sow what you sow. And when you do, what you sow will be fruitful.